Well, good morning. Welcome to uh, Farm Bureau's sixth annual uh, trade report. Uh, we bring this to you every year, talking about just the importance of trade in Nebraska, which is very substantial. I'm Mark McCard, president of Nebraska Farm Bureau. I live on a fourth generation farm in central city, Nebraska. Uh, we do both organic and conventional farming on corn, soybeans, uh, popcorn. We also have a hog operation. Uh, to me, uh, the, the value of trade is just really hard to articulate, and hopefully by the end of the time that you'll have a better understanding. Uh, trade in Nebraska accounts for almost 30% of all the ag receipts that we get in for Nebraska. 30%, think about that, is attributed to a trade. Uh, Nebraska is the fifth largest agricultural trading state, so if you put all the states together, we rank the fifth highest in trade for ag products. Uh, 2021 was a record year again for exports and agriculture commodities is worth 9.2 billion dollars now we talk about billions a lot these days actually talk about trillions when we get into the federal conversation but to put it in perspective uh, our states just budget what happens to run our state is about five plus billion so we're almost double that in just the value of ag exports in Nebraska, which is very substantial. So just a little bit on my farm, I talked about uh, we raise corn, soybeans, we raise popcorn. I had the opportunity to be in Japan uh, last November, and the popcorn that we raised on our farm, that company was selling to a theater that we were actually at, selling popcorn to the customers in Japan. And that was just a good reminder that the things that I grow on my farm uh, is, doesn't necessarily just go to a local processor, it goes around the world. Uh, even in our beef sector, we're the number one uh, beef exporter for 10 years running uh, out of Nebraska. Uh, Japan, for example, also uh, one of our top beef importers of Nebraska beef. So uh, just a number of things. Uh, Austin Harthorn, uh, he's our Nebraska Farm Bureau economist. He's gonna walk you some, through some of the numbers uh, that we're gonna be talking about today. So Austin. Hi, everyone. Uh, as Mark said, my name is Austin Harthorn. Uh, I'm the new economist here at Nebraska Farm Bureau, uh, and I'm here to run through the numbers of the trade report. Uh, the report was created by Jay Ramphy, a uh, former economist here at Nebraska Farm Bureau, but he is uh, with Rolling Prairie Economics, where he started a consulting firm there. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so these, I want to stress before I get into this, that these are 2021 numbers. Um, 2022 numbers will be out later this year. And actually, U.S. overall numbers are out, and those numbers look good. But for the purpose of this, these are 2021 numbers. And I'm about to throw a lot of numbers at you, so we'll, we'll get into this. Um, Nebraska exports overall shattered the record from any of the previous years. Like Mark said, $9.2 billion this year, with the previous record being around $7 billion. Um, that puts Nebraska as a state overall fifth in ag exports nationally. Um, and just, yeah, doing, doing really well overall in terms of exports. Oh, we can break this down by commodity. I have a graph over there. Uh, corn took the top overall spot this year, almost doubling from where we were last year, increased 98%. Uh, soybeans held solid at number two. Uh, it was fairly level year over year. Uh, we set a record uh, last year, so we maintained that level this year. And then beef was third. It grew at 40% this year at a very good uh, year for beef exports. Um, as Mark said, this was also the 10th consecutive year for B uh, Nebraska being the top state in beef exports. So we're looking good there. Uh, we also saw some growth in some of the minor categories uh, for e Nebraska exports, such as veggie oils, soy soybean, uh, meal, pork, wheat, stuff like that. So doing well overall across the board. Uh, we can break this down by county level uh, and look at where uh, production happens and where exports are uh, being taken out of. Uh, and you can see uh, this chart over there. Uh, soybeans uh, are the top export for much of eastern Nebraska. Corn dominates much of central Nebraska, and beef dominates west Nebraska, with a few counties having out west in the Panhandle having uh, top exports in wheat. But those are kind of the highlights of the report. Uh, I can kind of, I'll kind of go into some takeaways, or my personal takeaways from what I gather. Um, so we had big export records this year, uh, specifically in beef and corn. And we can talk about why that is, and a lot of it has to do with trade expansion in countries such as Mexico and China uh, in the news a lot lately, no surprise. Um, 
from 2020 to 2021, corn exports to China grew at 300%. Uh, in beef, they grew up 400%. They became a huge importer uh, of beef, and that's new. Um, switching over to Mexico, corn exports grew at 76% there. And that's significant for Nebraska, because almost 90% of our corn goes towards Mexico. So you start thinking about this uh, trade deal with Mexico, and you can kind of see the fallout there and how much impact it can have on Nebraska. Um, but those two countries, a lot of Nebraska exports and U.S. exports go to those countries. So uh, trade relations there are going to be a big deal going forward, specifically for Nebraskans. Um, so I mentioned all these numbers, but we, uh, we can really start to wonder why this matters for Nebraskans. And I can break that down here for you. Um, global, trades, uh, global trades impact has a huge uh, importance here in Nebraska. As Mark said, uh, about 30% of exports, 30% uh, of state receipts are exports. Uh, and I could break that down into commodities. Um, if you look at the value by crop of exports, soybeans is $7 per bushel valued to exports. Corn is around $170 per bushel. And uh, for a beef cow, $260 of that is derived from export value. Um, Breaking this down to the farm level, you can see around $200,000 of a farm's revenue being attributed to exports specifically. Uh, and th that thereby goes into local uh, e economies there and revitalizes and makes them more resilient. So uh, overall, I just really want to st uh, stress um, exports have a big deal uh, here locally in Nebraska. And it's easy to think about uh, just taking corn to the local elevator or taking uh, cattle to the uh, local sale barn. But beyond that, beyond that line of vision, um, there's big impacts happening, and that's what I really want to stress here. So, but for now, I'll turn it back over to Mark. Well, thank you, Austin. I appreciate that. Uh, just a lot of numbers, and we'll certainly uh, have the trade report available, the full trade report available to uh, those of you that are here and also those of you that are online. Uh, we want to welcome, welcome you as well. But we know that trade doesn't ac actually happen in a vacuum. There's a lot of policies that are around trade to enable us to trade with uh, partners from around the world. We are privileged to have uh, Congressman Adrian Smith here uh, with us this morning. Uh, Adrian is uh, on the Ways and Means Committee, is also the chairman of the Ways and Means uh, Trade Subcommittee. And I can tell you that if anybody in Washington on the House side of the equation, Adrian is the guy, the top guy uh, that, that understands and is uh, a sen senior in the trade conversation. So, Adrian, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's great to be out of Washington and back on the front lines of our economy, as I like to say, uh, visiting producers and various work sites uh, around uh, the third district. And I thank you for uh, having me here today to, to talk about trade. When it comes to trade, we're either gaining or we're losing. I don't think there's anything like uh, trading water, so to speak, uh, on trade. And I, I feel like we're losing ground right now because uh, trade uh, does not seem to be a priority uh, from uh, President Biden. Uh, you take the situation with Mexico. Uh, you know, agriculture was, I, I think, uh, instrumental with uh, trade, North American Free Trade Agreement some years ago. Uh, benefited from that, and when uh, the notion came up that it would be renegotiated, uh, there was some uh, you know, some concentration on let, let's make sure we do no harm and lose the advancements that we have made. And so a lot of folks leaned into uh, the discussion about USMCA. Biotechnology was key. Uh, definitely uh, with, with Canada and Mexico and, and USMCA, biotechnology needed to be there uh, because it wasn't there with NAFTA. Uh, Mexico agreed to, to accept our GMO product, and now they're saying they won't take it. Uh, this is something that's been happening for some time now. I'm glad that the administration is, is finally uh, taking action, uh, to the formal action that can be a little bit cumbersome and, and time consuming. Uh, I wish it would have started some time ago. Uh, I actually, I wish that uh, President Biden would take a stage anywhere with any kind of background, to take a podium on a stage and say, what Mexico is doing is not right. Now, from the previous administration, having trade, leveling that playing field of trade as such a high priority, and, and then leaving office and presenting, actually, the Biden administration with some great opportunities on trade, 
And the Biden administration ha has chosen not to take advantage of those, whether it's trade with Kenya, uh, pushing for um, a trade with uh, the UK and to include agriculture as well, very important component there. Uh, the numbers speak for themselves. Uh, Austin uh, pointed out uh, that, uh, for example, exports uh, to China have increased over the last few years, uh, but especially with, with that push during the previous administration uh, to, to really level the playing field and uh, enforce uh, the agreements uh, that are in place. That, that is always key. You don't really have a, a trade agreement uh, without enforcement. And so we need to lean forward to really lean in on, on the trade issue uh, and encourage the president to, to do the same. Uh, it is it's absolutely vital. We have lapsed uh, trade policies that would help our supply chain, and yet they've been lapsed uh, for more than two years. So now that there's a new majority uh, in, in the House, I think we can change that. Uh, but uh, we, we've lost ground, make no mistake. Uh, we have lost ground over the last couple of years as it relates to trade. So uh, we, we need to take advantage of these opportunities of, for example, Kenya uh, being eager to engage in a trade agreement with us. Uh, they're not the largest market per se, but they can help tee up good policies uh, to spread across the continent, continent of Africa. And uh, there are just so many opportunities. Uh, the, the list is long, uh, but uh, we, we all need to lean in on trade. I'm glad the Nebraska Farm Bureau understands this. They, they see the numbers, they produce the numbers, and, and they take action. So uh, thank you for gathering us here today. It's important uh, that we have these conversations uh, to elevate the profile of trade because it, it's, it's not just important to Nebraska farmers and ranchers per se, but it's about feeding America. It's about an economy in our country that we want to expand and grow and provide more opportunity. And it's about helping feed the world. Uh, in, a, in a substantive way, in an economically viable way uh, as well. So I, I see huge opportunity on the horizon. It's up to us to take advantage of that. Thank you. I'm happy to take questions. Questions for Adrian. Well, every administration does things a little bit differently, and that, that's fine. Uh, in fact, that can be good. Uh, but there seems to be such hesitation right now. And, you know, there there's some folks who say, well, we don't want to do a trade agreement because country X, you know, their labor and environmental standards just aren't what they need to be. Well, a trade agreement is what can fix that. Uh, of course, uh, we want a level playing field, and that's measured in a lot of different ways. Other countries that have different labor and environmental standards have an unfair uh, situation where, where they can produce uh, more, less expensively than, than we can, per se. So we want to level the playing field. And history will tell you that trade agreements actually get other countries to elevate their labor and environmental standards. But you need a trade agreement to do that. And uh, the lack of engagement uh, from, the, from the current administration, I think, is incredibly damaging. Now, you, you take the previous administration, um, and, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of tariffs. I'll tell you straight up. But when leveling the playing field uh, for trade is, is the priority, I think we should keep all of our options on the table, incidentally. So it's hard for me to criticize someone for, um, you know, engaging in an area that I may not be a big fan of, but we need to keep our options open with any negotiation. But the priority that trade was under the previous administration really brought more people along uh, with, with it. And you take USMCA, more Democrats in the House voted for USMCA than Republicans. I don't know if that's ever happened before. Now, there, there, had, there were some priorities there uh, contained in the bill. It was a, it was a Trump priority, the, the very bill, the renegotiation of NAFTA being USMCA. That was a Trump priority. And they brought more Democrats along than I think ever ever before. And, and I think that's, that's a great approach that we can, that we can uh, use as a springboard for, for more trade agreements uh, moving forward uh, that can bring a lot of folks here uh, around our own country 
along uh, to understanding uh, the importance and, and the uh, opportunity around trade. Following up on that question, kind of if nothing, well, if little things were to change and this current trend keeps moving for the rest of the Biden administration, what are some consequences that Nebraskans, the exporters and farmers, might see as a result of the, the lack of trade? Hmm. Those lines that are trending upward will trend downward. I mean, that, I think it, it's really as basic as that. And um, those lines trending upward are because previous administrations set trade as a priority. Both, both parties, I, I would say. Um, and, and right now, though, we, we are just at such a standstill from the Biden administration. Uh, it, it concerns me about the future of our ag economy here in Nebraska, but across America and literally around the world. I mean, the disruptions uh, uh, happening uh, in, in Ukraine affect the whole world. We need to make sure we have trade policies in place uh, that can compensate for, for the complications and, and the disruptions uh, coming out of Ukraine. with the impacts of 2020 policies. So you think that it's the previous yeah. administration left them up to success and I really do. I really do. They uh, the uh, the Trump administration handed over the Biden administration many an opportunity and I realized that Joe Biden might try to claim credit for some of this. There's a trend in his rhetoric. Um, but fact of the matter is it, it's the the upward trend there is because of the priority that the previous administration placed on trade, enforcement, and, and leveling the playing field. Because, like, you know, for, for decades, uh, trade policies unintentionally tilted the playing field uh, against us. We happened to give other countries more access to our markets than other countries gave access uh, for us into their markets. And that's not a sustainable uh, situation. And we, we need to uh, correct that. Uh, every opportunity we have Kenya, UK, these are two, two great opportunities uh, right now. We just really need to lean into it. That, other questions? Sure. Well, uh, my website, adriansmith.house.gov, we, we welcome comments uh, electronically, certainly uh, various offices that I have, Scotts Bluff, Grand Island, Washington, D.C., happy to hear from folks. Um, it, it's, it's their ideas that I, that I take to Washington and uh, their perspectives. And America is a big country. Nebraska is a big state. And agriculture is a very broad industry across our state. We grow things in parts of our state that we don't grow in other parts of our state. And, uh, but very productively so. I know um, when you look at water policy, that's, that's very important as well for, uh, and th that's different across our own state. Um, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, policies with the state government as, as well, uh, relating to um, wells and, and the access to, to water. Surface irrigation that tends to be more of a federal issue, uh, that, that is key as well. And so we want to make sure that we have a vibrant opportunity uh, and that innovation can lead the way. It's impressive that uh, we've seen the advancements uh, that we have, whether it's through biotechnology or the, the sheer will of producers to do more with less. Uh, the fact that we've seen record yields amidst a drought, that doesn't happen by accident. And uh, that very intentional effort to, to modernize uh, uh, methods uh, of production, I think uh, they've they've shown some dividends. Let's let's take advantage of that, though, uh, as we do help feed the world, and um, and, and keep a, a vibrant and and uh, viable ec uh, agriculture economy. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Well, th thank you, Adrian, for being here. Austin, thank you for your work on the trade report. Uh, it's clearly. Uh, one of the reasons that trade is one of the top priorities for Nebraska Farm Bureau. Uh, we get to uh, visit with Adrian on a regular basis. We're out in Washington 
advocating on a regular basis as well for agriculture, for trade. I personally have talked to the White House about the need uh, for, the, for this administration to take action on some of these very high priority uh, trade conversations that Adrian uh, just mentioned. Uh, I want to thank you for attending today. Thank you for those, of, again, that are online. Uh, and again, if there's needing any more information needed, uh, you can go to uh, nefb.org and get that information. Thank you for being here.